It's time now for Mr. Keene, Tracer of Lost Persons. Ladies and gentlemen, Anison and Kalinos present Mr. Keene, Tracer of Lost Persons, one of the most famous characters of American fiction in one of radio's most thrilling dramas. Tonight and every Thursday at the same time, the famous old investigator takes from his file and brings to us one of his most celebrated missing persons cases. Tonight's case is entitled The Telephone Book Murder Case. Here is something you should know if you ever suffer from the sudden pain of headaches, neuritis, or neuralgia. It's a way to ease the pain, often within a few minutes. A way that is incredibly fast and effective. It's anison. Anison is like a doctor's prescription. That is, anison contains not just one, but a combination of medically proven, active ingredients in easy-to-take tablet form. Thousands of people were first introduced to anison through their own physicians or dentists. But today, it is in such widespread use that all drug counters have it, and anyone may enjoy its benefits. Next time you suffer from the pains of a headache, neuritis, or neuralgia, by all means, try Anison. You'll like the convenience of Anison tablets, and you'll be delighted with Anison's incredibly fast action. For most effective relief, use only as directed. A-N-A-C-I-N. Anison. Ask for it today at your druggist. Now for Mr. Keene and the telephone book murder case. Our scene opens in a fashionable New York mansion, the home of a wealthy bachelor. At the moment, he's standing before a mirror in the drawing room, putting the finishing touches to his evening clothes as his valet stands nearby, both unaware of the impending tragedy which threatens. Well, how do I look, Edwards? Perfect, sir. Your new dinner jacket is an excellent job of tailoring, Mr. Andrews. Thank you, Edwards. Oh, um, you may take the evening off. These bachelor dinners usually go on for hours, and I won't be home until late. Very good, sir. Good night, Mr. Andrews. Good night. Now, where did he put that top hat? Oh, here it is. Something you want, Edwards? I... Oh, I thought it was my valet. I... What are you doing with that gun, you... Oh. Oh. I... I should have known. I should have known. Mr. Andrews! Mr. Andrews! Good evening, Edwards. Is Mr... Mr. Temple, come quick. Shot. He's lying over here on the floor, sir. No. A doctor won't help, Edwards. Better call the police. Brad Andrews is dead. I, uh, I beg your pardon... But which one of you gentlemen is Mr. Keene, the famous investigator? Mr. Keene's over here, mister. I'm his partner, Mike Clancy. What can I do for you? My name is Edwards, Mr. Keene. Have you read this morning's paper, sir, about Mr. Andrew's murder? Why, we were talking about that a minute ago. We know some of the details, yes. I was Mr. Andrew's valet, sir. I've come to ask you to enter the case, Mr. Keene. I don't have much money, but I... Sit down, Edwards. And try to calm yourself. It's... It's been like a nightmare, sir. I found Mr. Andrew's body only a minute or two after I left him in the drawing room of his home. I heard the shots, but when I ran into the room, he was already dead. According to the newspapers, someone else was there when the police were called. A friend of Mr. Andrew, sir. Mr. George Temple. He rang the doorbell just after I found Mr. Andrew's lying there. He, uh... 
He told me to call the police. I see. Both gentlemen were about to attend a bachelor dinner given in Mr. Andrews' honor. Oh, Mr. Andrews was about to be married? Uh, yes, next week, sir. He he was a fine man, Mr. Keene, and a generous one. I worked for him as his valet for over two years, and I... Uh, You're I... very upset about the murder, aren't you, Edwards? Uh, Mr. Keene, I... I told you that Mr. Andrews was a generous man. So generous, you even trembled at the thought of his death? Why, I... I... Oh, do you have another motive for coming here? Edwards, if you want my help, you must give me frankness and honesty in exchange. I wouldn't hide anything from Mr. Keene, Edwards. He'll find it out anyway, sooner or later. Just as sure as a shamrock's green. Uh, perhaps I... Perhaps I am a bit concerned for myself, Mr. Keene, sir. Why, Edwards? I was the only one present in Mr. Andrews' home when he was shot. The police didn't hold me after they questioned me, but I've noticed that someone has been following me around, and I'm sure it's a plain-clothes detective. Well, do the cops have a motive, Edwards? Any reason why you might want to murder Mr. Andrews? Oh, no, Mr. Clancy, I haven't done anything. Mrs. Lawford can vouch for my honesty and loyalty to Mr. Andrews. Who is Mrs. Lawford? The woman Mr. Andrews was about to marry, Mr. Keene. She was recently divorced from Herbert Lawford, the uh, industrialist. Oh, yes, yes, he is a very wealthy man. Uh, Mr. Andrews was even wealthier, sir. He owned oil wells in Texas and Oklahoma. He was known as the Oil King. Well, Edwards, my partner and I are going to do everything we can to break this case. All I want to know is, are you quite certain you've told me everything? I, uh, I have, Mr. Keene, sir. As I said before, Mrs. Lawford can vouch for me. Well, I'd like to talk to her. You say Mrs. Mr. Andrews was about to marry her? Uh, yes, sir. She has a suite in the Hotel de Glass. Uh, my wife, Lila, is her personal maid. Oh? Uh, Mr. Andrews was instrumental in getting Lila her position with Mrs. Lawford, sir. I see. I, uh, I want to take the opportunity of thanking both you gentlemen for your help. I can't tell you how much I appreciate it. Goodbye, sir. Goodbye, and you'll hear from me shortly. Uh, goodbye, Mr. Clancy. So long, Edwards. Well, I still think that gentleman's gentleman is holding out on us, Mr. Keene. Yes, yeah, so do I, Mike. He knows something about that murder. He's afraid to tell us. But it may be easier to find out what it is through his wife. Uh, Mike, when you were a patrolman on the force years ago, you had quite a reputation with uh, several cooks on your beat. <laughs> well, now, sir, I was no Don Juan, but sometimes I drop into Maggie Ryan's kitchen for a cup of coffee and a chat, but, well... That was quite a while ago. Well, you're still very good at getting people to talk without using strung arm methods. I'd like you to talk to Lila Edwards in a friendly way and see if you can get any information out of her while I'm interviewing her mistress, Mrs. Lawford. Well, I'll do what I can, boss. Mrs. Lawford's hotel suite will be our first stop. And then we'll go on to the scene of the crime. Yes, sir. Is Mrs. Lawford at home? Why, who's calling, sir? Mr. Keene and Mr. Clancy. Mr. Keene, the investigator? Oh, please come in, sir. Mrs. Lawford will be back in a few minutes, sir. Please make yourselves comfortable. Oh, thank you. I, uh, I was wondering if I could have a glass of water, miss. Oh, why, of course, Mr. Clancy. I'll get it for you. Oh, don't trouble yourself. I'll go along. I'll, uh, wait here, Mike. All right, Mr. Keene. Here's the pantry. Just a moment, please. Hmm. Sure, and I see you're careful about how you run the water. <laughs> well, it's precious right now. Oh, it sure is. And by the looks of this pantry, I'd say that uh, the cook was careful about the rest of the house as well. Well, I'm not a very good cook, Mr. Clancy. As a matter of fact, my real vocation isn't being a lady's maid either. Oh, no? I'm studying shorthand now so I can get a position as someone's secretary. Well, more power to you. Of course, my husband... Your husband what, miss? Oh, he just doesn't seem to understand that a girl likes to go up in the world. Or sometimes he's so narrow-minded and jealous I could scream. Oh, that's so. 
But maybe I'm talking too much, Mr. Clay. Oh, sure, and I'm a man with a sympathetic ear, Mrs. Uh... My name's Edwards, Lila Edwards. Oh, and you're married to a jealous man, eh? Why, he even thought I was flirting with his... Oh, that must be Mrs. Lawford. I'd better answer the door. Okay, Lila. Oh, someone's at the door. Uh, yes, Mr. Keene. Mrs. Lawford must have forgotten her key. Any luck, Mike? Did you learn anything from Lila the maid? Well, Lila's a talker, all right, boss. I found out that her husband, Edwards, that valet, is a jealous man. That's interesting. The gentlemen are in the living room, Mrs. Lawford. Thank you, Lila. Mr. Keene? Yes. I'm Mrs. Lawford. Oh, how do you do? This is my partner, Mike Clancy. How do you do, Mr. Clancy? Pleased to meet you, ma'am. I... I imagine you're here in regard to Brad Andrews' murder. Yes, we are. It was a terrible shock, Mr. Keene. We... We would have been married next week. So I understand. You... You must forgive me if I find it difficult to talk about it. I know what a trial this is for you, Mrs. Lawford. But if I'm to solve this case... I need all the information I can get. I know. I'll do my best to help. Now, can you tell me if Mr. Andrews had any enemies? If he had, I didn't know about them. But he had hundreds of friends, Mr. Keene. Did you notice uh, anything unusual about him lately? Was he troubled by anything? No. I... Wait, there was something that bothered him. I remember how moody he became one evening, which was unlike Brad. He was usually so gay. Did you ask him why he was in that mood? I did, Mr. Keene, but he changed the subject. I forgot about it until now. Oh, it's too bad. Perhaps... Oh, Lila, my maid, must be in her room. I'd better answer the door. Excuse me. Well, it looks as though this visit didn't help us much, Mr. Keene. I wouldn't say that, Mike. Your talk with Lila Edwards gave me an idea or two. Mr. Keene, I want you to meet Mr. George Temple, a good friend of Brad's and mine... Mr. Keene and Mr. Clancy George. How do you do? Pleased to meet you. You have no idea how pleased I am that you're investigating Brad Andrews' murder, Mr. Keene. I'm sure we'll have quick results now that you're on the case. Well, we hope to do our best, Mr. Temple. Mrs. Lawford. Yes, Lila. Shall I serve tea, madam? Please. Yes, ma'am. Mr. Keene, I hope you'll stay. Eve, is, uh, is that your maid? Ah, yes, George. How long have you had her? Oh, three weeks. Mr. Temple, why do you ask? Mr. Keene, I saw that girl three nights ago in the Pelican Club. I was there with Brad Andrews at the time. The Pelican Club? Saints preserve us, but that's one of the most expensive nightclubs in town. Yes, Mike, a very expensive place for a girl who works as a lady's maid. But Lila couldn't afford to go to a place like that. Eve, she was there. And she was dressed in the most beautiful gold evening gown I've ever seen. Did you say a gold evening gown? Yes, that's right. Why, I lost a gold lame evening gown about a week ago. You lost an evening gown, Mrs. Lawford? Yes, Mr. Keene. Mr. Temple, can you describe the gown Lila was wearing in that nightclub? Well, it uh, it had sequins on the shoulder and uh, and a long sash. That's my that... gown. I'm sure of it. It was an exclusive design. Perhaps your evening gown wasn't lost, Mrs. Lawford. It may have been stolen. By Lila? Mr. Clancy, you think my maid would steal? We'll find out soon enough. Come into the pantry with me, Mike. Okay, Mr. Keene. I never would have believed that Lila was a... Pantry door is closed, Mike. Well, it was open just a minute ago, Mr. Keene. Here, I... I... There's no one here, boss. Lila's gone, Mike. That door on the other side must lead to the hotel corridor. You're right, boss. It does. She's run out on us. She must have seen George Temple and recognized him, too. Ask the police to send out an alarm for her, Mike. No. Wait a minute. I got a better idea. She may try to get in touch with her husband, Edwards. Our next move is Brad Andrews' home, the scene of the murder, and another talk with Edwards, his valet. just a moment, we'll return to Mr. Keene and the telephone book murder case. Meanwhile, you've read about it, Krypton, K-R-I-P-T-I-N, the antihistamine wonder drug that, taken at the start, can kill a cold. Kill it the way no previous cold tablet, no aspirin, quinine, or chest rub could do. In tests at the United States Naval Hospital, Great Lakes, Illinois, Krypton was preferred by patients over all other formulas tested. For spectacular results, take Krypton at the first sign of a cold. Today at your druggist, get Krypton. Handy pocket size, only 29 cents for 10 tablets. 50 Krypton tablets, 98 cents. Less than 2 cents a tablet. 
now back to Mr. Keene and the telephone book murder case. Mr. Keene, the great investigator, and his partner, Mike Clancy, are investigating the murder of Brad Andrews, a wealthy oil man who was about to marry a beautiful divorcee named Eve Lawford. In Mrs. Lawford's sumptuous hotel suite, Mr. Keene and Mike meet George Temple, a friend of the victim's, who found the body along with Edwards, Brad Andrews' valet. Now it is discovered that Lila Edwards, the valet's wife, who works for Mrs. Lawford, is missing from the hotel suite. And as Mike and Mr. Keene return to the living room... Mrs. Lawford, your maid Lila Edwards is gone. Gone, Mr. Keene? She Keen? ran away, ma'am. I guess she figured Mr. Temple here recognized her. I agree with my partner, Mike Clancy. Since Mr. Temple said he saw Lila in an expensive light club... Wearing one of your dresses, Mrs. Lawford, she may be afraid of being arrested for stealing, or perhaps for murder. Murder? But, Mr. Keene, what connection would Eve's maid have with the murder of Brad Andrews? That's what I intend to find out, Mr. Temple. Well, it beats me. Uh, cigarette, Eve? Mm, uh, no, thank you, George. Mr. Keene? Mr. Clancy, will you have a cigarette? I'll have one of my own cigars, thank you, Mr. Temple. Well, Mike, uh, we'd better be on our way. Oh, you're going, Mr. Keene? Yes, to Brad Andrews' home, the scene of the crime. We're going to question Edwards, Mr. Andrews' valet, a little further. Mr. Keene, sir, and Mr. Clancy... I, I wasn't expecting you. May we come in, Edwards? Uh, why, yes, sir. My partner and I want to make a thorough search of Mr. Andrews' house. I'll show you around, sir. Well, that won't be necessary. Mike can find his way. I'd like to speak to you, if I may, Edwards. Is uh, that the bedroom? Uh, yes, Mr. Clancy. Well, I'll start in there. <coughs> Mr. Keene, uh, have you found any further clues to poor Mr. Andrews' murder? Yes, several, Edwards. Oh, that's fine, sir. One of them concerns your wife. Lila? Where is she, Edwards? Why, uh, she's with Mrs. Lawford in her hotel suite. She's Mrs. Lawford's maid, sir. Yes, she... I know. But she left there almost an hour ago. She did? And she came here. Here? But why, uh, but why, how do you know, sir? I saw a pair of woman's gloves on the foyer table as we came in. Uh, why, uh, th th those belong to, uh... Edwards, to, uh... you came to me for help, and I offered to give it to you. In return, all I'm getting is evasions. But, but Mr. Keene, You're I... You're not being honest with me. I may have to take you to police headquarters for further questioning about Mr. Andrews' murder. No, no, Mr. Keene, please. I, I'm not trying to interfere with your investigation. Then why don't you tell me the truth? <laughs> I... I will, sir. And I swear I'll never lie to you again. Is your wife in this house, Edwards? Yes, sir. She arrived ten minutes before you did. Where is she hiding? In my room downstairs, Mr. Keene. Will you get her, please? I want a full explanation from both of you. Very well, sir. Mr. Keene, sir. Yes, Mike. I've just gone through Mr. Andrews' bedroom, and I come up with something odd. This telephone book. Oh, what's odd about it, Mike? Well, do you know where I found it, sir? In one of the bureau drawers, along with these papers. Those papers look like stocks. All except this document. It's an insurance policy. The others are stock certificates issued by the Exeter Oil Company. Well, let's see that phone book. Do you notice how old this directory is, Mike? It was printed seven years ago, in 1943. And why did Mr. Andrews keep it in a bureau drawer along with these valuable oil stocks? Well, that's something we'll... Uh... Mike. Yes, boss? Someone placed a marker in this phone book. Let's find the page. Ah, here it is. Boss, one of the phone numbers in that page is circled with a red pencil. Yes, A.C. Elwood. Mike, call this phone number. If there's no answer... Well, it's been a long time, boss. Maybe Elwood don't have a phone anymore. Then check with the latest telephone book for his name. If that doesn't help, get in touch with the police. Ask them to go through their criminal files for 1943 and check for an A.C. Elwood. Okay, sir. But don't do it here in the Andrews house, Mike. I don't want you to be overheard. Phone from the outside. And then wait for me in front of the door. Right, boss. 
Mr. Keene, here is Lila, my wife. Oh, Mr. Keene, oh, please, sir, I, I didn't mean to steal that dress. I, I just wanted to borrow it. Dress? What dress? Edwards, your wife, Lila, was seen several nights ago in the Pelican Club, wearing one of Mrs. Lawford's evening gowns. Who were you with, Lila? I... I... Was it Mr. Andrews? No. Edwards, do you suspect your wife of seeing Mr. Andrews behind your back? Yes, Mr. Keene. That's why I... I was afraid to go to the police when he was murdered. I thought they'd blame it on me. Because of jealousy? I had reason to be jealous. I know that now. No! But apparently you picked the wrong man to be jealous of. When your wife was seen in that nightclub, she wasn't with Mr. Andrews. Then it was someone else. Yes. Yes, it was someone else, John. My cousin, Frank. Frank Nils? Yes. You certainly couldn't be jealous of him. Then why didn't you tell me about it, Lila? Because you hated the idea of my going out and having a good time. You didn't want to spend money on me, so I decided to spend it on myself. It was fun to dance and see a show every once in a while. But you're too dingy and narrow-minded to realize that. In case you're unaware of it, there's something more at stake here than a quarrel between a husband and wife. You too, Lila, could be arrested on suspicion of murder. No. You might have killed Mr. Andrews to keep him from giving you away on two counts. One to your husband and the other in regard to that stolen dress. I swear I didn't kill him, Mr. Keener. I would never... I'll stand by her, sir. If you say my wife is a killer, I say you've made a terrible mistake. I didn't say she was, Edwards. I only told you how the police might look at it. However, I want you both to remain here until I get in touch with you again. Do you understand? Yes, sir. Then you're not going to turn me into the police, Mr. Keene. Lila, you promised to return the dress you took from Mrs. Lawford. And I'll expect you to keep that promise. As for the murder, I believe I'll have the solution in a very short time. I hope I didn't keep you waiting long in front of the house here, Mr. Keene. What did you learn, Mike? Well, sir, the phone company told me that A.C. Elwood hasn't been a subscriber for seven years. And then I checked with the cops. A.C. Elwood's wanted for murder, boss. They've been looking for that character for years. And I've got a complete description. With that description, Mike, I think we'll be able to put our hands on Brad Andrews' murderer within half an hour. <laughs> Mr. Keene. Good evening, Mrs. Lawford. Oh, back again, Mr. Keene? I'm glad you remain here, Mr. Temple. I have some news for both of you. But I was just about to leave, but... Uh... You can spare a few minutes, Mr. Temple, can't you? I, of course. Mrs. Lawford, it occurred to me after I left that I'd heard something about you before. I believe I read an account of your recent divorce and why it occurred. My husband and I were incompatible, that's all, Mr. Keene. And in the late Brad Andrews, you found the perfect mate? Yes. Did his wealth have anything to do with it? What do you mean? If I recall correctly, your husband divorced you because of your extravagant habits. You spent over a million dollars within a span of three years. M Mr. Keene, it wasn't entirely my fault. My husband didn't love me. I, I, I tried to find some escape in living luxuriously. But I swear I fell sincerely in love with Brad Andrews after I received my divorce. But Brad Andrews was a rich man. This life insurance policy is proof of that. It carries an insurance of one million dollars. What? I didn't know Brad Andrews carried a million dollar policy. Yes, he did, Mr. Temple. Mrs. Lawford here is the beneficiary. Brad took that insurance policy out just before he died. I know what you're getting at, Mr. Keene. You're trying to accuse me of killing the man I love for that insurance money. But I have nothing to be afraid of. Because I'm innocent. You'd have a great deal to be afraid of, Mrs. Lawford, if I hadn't already solved this case. Mr. Keene, you found the killer? Yes. Uh, Mr. Temple, do you have a cigarette by any chance? Why, of course. Oh, thank you. Uh, may I see that cigarette case, Mr. Temple? Here you are. Hmm. Why, well, it's very handsome. Now, I bought it years ago. But, uh, about this murder... Oh, yes. Uh, can either of you... Identify a firm named the Exeter Oil Company? Why, yes, Mr. Keene. That's the company George here is interested in. Yes, it is. And it's probably a fraudulent concern. What? Temple, I'm putting you under arrest for the murder of Brad Andrews. Mr. Keene! 
The initials in this cigarette case are A-C-E. A-C-E stands for A.C. Elwood, a man who's already wanted by the police for a murder that took place seven years ago. Don't move, either of you. George, good heavens, Mr. Keene, he has a gun. Yes, Miss Lawford. George Temple here is a very dangerous man. He had a date with Brad Andrews to attend that bachelor dinner. He entered Andrews' house, killed his alleged friend, and left. A few moments later, he rang the bell and pretended to have just arrived in order to provide an alibi for himself. That's a very clever deduction, Keene. And I know your motive, too, Temple. Brad Andrews found out in some way that you were A.C. Elwood, the man wanted for murder. He found your real name in an old phone book and connected it with your present alias. He was trying to investigate you more thoroughly when you put an end to his life. Andrews thought he was putting something over on me. Letting me go on thinking we were still chummy when all the time he was trying to send me to the electric chair. I should say he became suspicious of you because of that oil stock which you sold him and which is undoubtedly worthless. (laughs) You'd be surprised how much of it I've sold to half a dozen other chumps. And you've made one mistake yourself, Keene. You gave me a chance to pull this gun and now I'm going to make you pay for that. Mr. Keene! I just managed to clip him before he pulled the trigger, boss. Which was lucky for me, Mike. That was fast work. He's dead, Mr. Keene. Yes, Mrs. Laughlin. He didn't know that Mike Clancy was hiding in the foyer on my orders. Call the police, Mike. It looks as though A.C. Elwood, alias George Temple, was the one who made a fatal mistake. And it was his last. And so Mr. Keene finds the solution to the telephone book murder case. The next time you are suffering from the pains of headache, neuritis, or neuralgia, try Anison. You'll bless the day you heard of this incredibly fast way to relieve these pains. Now, the reason Anison is so wonderfully fast-acting and effective is this. Anison is like a doctor's prescription. That is, Anison contains not just one, but a combination of medically proven active ingredients in easy-to-take tablet form. Thousands of people have received envelopes containing Anison tablets from their own dentist or physician, and in this way have discovered the incredibly fast relief Anison brings from pain of headache, neuritis, or neuralgia. So next time such pain strike, take Anison. For most effective relief, use only as directed. Your druggist has Anison in handy boxes of 12 and 30 and economical family-sized bottles of 50 and 100. The name is Anison, A-N-A-C-I-N. Mr. Keene, Tracer of Lost Persons, is based on the novel Mr. Keene. The radio sequel is originated and produced by Frank and Ann Hummer. Dialogue by Lawrence Clee. Bennett Kilpack plays Mr. Keene. It is on the air every Thursday at this time. Don't miss Mr. Keene next Thursday when the kindly old Tracer turns to the Weeping Willow Murder Case. When knife-like pains are stabbing you in the back from unusual exercise, lifting, or other muscular strain, it's a good time to try heat liniment. Heat is strong, yet does not burn the skin. You just brush it on the sore place with the applicator, and right away heat starts to penetrate to ease the pain and bring soothing relief. And it keeps on working for hours to bring grand comfort. Get heat liniment at your drugstore. It's H-E-E-T, heat. Mr. Keene, Tracer of Lost Persons, will be on the air next Thursday at this same time. This is Larry Elliott saying goodbye for Mr. Keene and the Whitehall Pharmaco Company, makers of Anison and Kalinos, and many other dependable high-quality drug products. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. <laughs>